Welcome back to CI Living. Our own Joe Barlow is here with yet another edition of Joe Do My Job, where we send him out into central Illinois to learn how to do your job. All right, Joe, last time you were crossing guard. What is it this week? Well, since it's uh, April Fool's week, I decided to learn a job that involved fooling. I met up with a champagne group called Psychic Joker. Their mentalist and mind reader is David Dergeist, and with his help, I learned that being a magic person is, I learned what being a magic person is all about. How do you know I didn't just pull a trick on you? You could have. I had a whole deck right here. It's amazing. I, <laughs> I don't think you can do a card switch that effectively. No offense. Ooh, but, check the tape. Yeah. <laughs> the tape will show that I have no experience doing magic, but David Dergeist has a lot. When I was a kid, I used to always watch David Copperfield on television. I was always just enamored with that. Never really did anything with magic at the time, but I was always very interested in the concepts of magic. And then about 10 years ago, I was working as a locksmith. And one of the guys at the shop showed me a couple of close-up tricks, and I had to know how they were done, so I went over to Dallas and Company, and I bought them, and I've been hooked ever since. Most of what I do when I'm on stage is what's termed mentalism, and it deals with uh, mind reading and predictions and trying to see how far you can take the, the limits of the mind. So in that sense, appearance-wise, it is very different than most magic that most people have seen. It, it, most magic shows, the, the response after an, an effect is, you know, clapping, applause, yelling, you know, things like that. At a mentalism show, you get, you know, gasps, you get pondered, inquisitive looks, you get stunned silence. So while the energy behind the reaction is, is equal in both areas, the type of reaction is very different. Um, with mentalism, it, it tends to be a more... Uh, inward looking response just because you know I'm poking around inside your head and that tends to creep people out <laughs> a little bit sometimes how would you describe your kind of on stage persona um, in terms of you know are you Copperfield are you showy are you or are you kind of a quiet uh, dominance over the audience I tend to be a little bit quieter um, I guess the way I describe it to a lot of people is more it's it's like a very confident guy next door that also kind of creeps you out just a little bit <laughs> <laughs> um, well, a lot of the magic that I do is a little bit on the creepy side. You know, like I was saying earlier, poking around in people's heads, sticking needles in my face, you know, things like that. It's a little bit more of the creepy stuff. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a little bit creepy. And I want to talk, since you brought up needles in your face, I yeah. want to talk about your look because obviously as a magician you need credibility and you need, I mean, even your hairdo I think mm -hmm. is, I don't think the bosses will let me change my hairdo to match you, but, but you know, you how am do you think you should try? Well, let's go for it. <laughs> let's do it. One of my old mentors told me about dressing for a magic show is always look like you have someplace better to go next <laughs> because it gives you that added credibility. You know, you, it puts you in a slight separation from the audience. So while you actively you're trying to connect from the audience, you're still keeping that separation just a little bit. After a quick transfer of brain energy, it was time for me to learn a simple card trick. I can't even shuffle a deck, so. Not, not even just a regular? No. I can, like, you know, kind of throw them back and forth, but it doesn't work well. It's going to be entertaining. That's, that's probably my <laughs> major downfall as a magician. Or okay. what, what, am I a... What was the... Uh, what was Mickey Mouse called in Sorcerer's the... Apprentice. Sorcerer's Apprentice. Is that what I am? Sure. Wait, let's go with that. As the Sorcerer's Apprentice, I didn't understand how the trick was done, even after seeing it multiple times. What we're going to do is we're going to take some random card and turn it into yours. Now I want you to... I'm controlling my <laughs> mind right now. <laughs> These cards don't even exist, do they? No, so they don't. There, there are no cards. There is no spoon. One, two, three. Turn it right into yours. Good job. <laughs> You're so wonderfully surprised. <laughs> I was thinking it was going to be a picture of me or something, but that's okay. okay yes, whatever. <laughs> Wouldn't it be amazing if where you cut the cards, 
was the four diamonds. That would be good. That'd be great. Go ahead and take a look at it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> What's entertaining for me uh -huh. is knowing that you do know what I'm doing. You just can't put the pieces together. Because uh -huh. everything that I did, mm -hmm. you, you have the basic the concept in your mind right. of, of what I did. All right, uh, Joe's here now. You, you learned a little magic there, as we saw. Now let's see if, uh, if you can pull one of those tricks off. This is the one trick that I learned, and yeah, I've never done magic, and I don't even really handle cards ever, so I'm just going to say that before we go here. <laughs> Preface your trick before. All right, and, okay. and Heather, I'm going to do it to you, okay? Okay. So please pick a card. No, I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the card I wanted you to pick. <laughs> okay. A little mind magic here. All right, I'm going to shoot these cards into my hand, Heather, and you have to tell me when to stop, okay? Okay. You got to do Sometimes it. Sometimes before they run out. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was going to go Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Longer. I know you got, I, This is my first time. You got to settle down <laughs> this here. This is really <laughs> magic. This is TV magic. Take her easy and just don't, don't make me go through the whole stop. deck. Okay. Okay. Now, please, put, put your card there. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Now... I'm going to cut the deck. I thought you were going to say cut the cheese. <laughs> Please don't do Not that, that ma'am. kind of magic show. Poor sir. <laughs> now, I'm going to have you cut the deck. <laughs> okay. Because then that shows that I have, you know, no... So please cut the deck, place it in this hand. Nope, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> hold your horses. I will tell you what to do. I am the magician. Okay. okay. All right, so I want to point out to you, Heather, you could have cut the deck at any place, right, Drew? Top, bottom, middle. It was your choice. Right. Sorry, I got carried away. You couldn't away. really do the top, but... <laughs> well, but, you know, it's near the top. Okay. Joe, you're killing me. I'm sorry. I'm the magician here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be incredible if that right there was your It card? would be incredible. Because I'm clearly not a good magician. <laughs> <laughs> it would be the most incredible part about it. Well, actually, why don't you... You can pull it out, and well, I really hope it's your card. It's not. That's not your card? It is. I'm kidding. It is. Never. <laughs> In all of my days as a magician, <laughs> has, anyone, has anyone ever done that to me? It is. Did you, it is. I forget, he, did he you show it. the camera? I didn't. I, did. I, was, I was afraid you'd see it. There's too many so monitors out here. All right, well, we're going to have some real magicians up next. <laughs> and I mean, not... You're, you're, you Good know, job. I'm an amateur. apprentice. You're a magnificent. Okay.